The question I'm asked today is in relation to pitch fee increases and specifically about the inflation element, i.e. can the park take the rate of inflation from any point during the year when applying it to a potential pitch fee increase or does it have to take the specific inflation rate at the point of the review? Now when you approach a question like this, it's important to first of all turn back to the actual license agreement because if it's well drafted, it will always provide you with the answer. Now of course here, most of these license agreements have not been well drafted and most of them therefore do not provide the answer. So today I'm gonna to explain to you what happens next. But let's start the journey here. And let me start off by saying this. I'm answering this question having looked at a, at a specific license agreement. Your agreement may not say the same thing. It may be different. And therefore, the result that I get to today, the ultimate answer to this particular person's question may be different in your set of circumstances. But the journey you will go on to answer the question should be the same. Now, the first thing you do, as I say, you go to the license agreement and you look at the particular clause that deals with pitch review increases. Here, it's clause eight, clause 8.4 to be specific. And at clause 8.4, it sets out what factors the park can take into account when applying an increase. And one of those factors, and it's the only factor that's relevant for this video today, is inflation. So the park can consider the rate of inflation where inflation currently is when considering whether it is going to increase the pitch fees and if it is, by how much. So the next step of the journey then is to look at the definition of inflation. Now it should pretty much always be the same because inflation is inflation. Although there can be times when they take the rate of inflation, the, the test of uh, how much it's gone up or gone down, from a different place. Normally, it's from the Retail Price Index, better known as the RPI. That's what it is in this case. So we look at the definition, it's on the screen now, you'll see what it says. And the last part of this journey in looking into the, to the contract, to the license agreement, will be to look at the definition of review date. Ordinarily, and in most of the license agreements I've seen in this sector, the review date will be the same date that you entered into this particular license, this particular contract. Here, it happens to be the 1st of October. Now, this person who contacted me, he has told me that last year, actually now the year before, um, when reviewing the pitch fees, the park took the inflation from the 1st of October. He had no dispute about that. He then tells me that the year after, they didn't do that and instead they took the inflation rate from May. So his question is, can they cherry pick? Can they just decide year on year where they take this from? Now, I've seen arguments in this particular case and more generically from both sides. I've seen lawyers that seem to be representing uh, many, many of the license holders, i.e. consumers, and their view is, nope, you cannot fluctuate the date. It has to always be on the review date. And I've seen lawyers, or I think the same lawyers who have looked at this same particular agreement I've looked at, who have concluded that because the definition of inflation says that you take it from the date of agreement, from, in my view, is an important word here, uh, that it follows that the park can only apply the inflation rate as at the 1st of October every single year. Um, the park's view is obviously different. And the views I've seen from various different parks and in this park, park as well, is that that's not right. They can apply whatever date or whatever inflation date they like throughout the year as they have done so in this case. And as I have actually seen in many other cases as well. My view is that both parties are wrong. Now, what both parties have done quite rightly at the start is they've looked at this as a matter of how do we interpret the contract, the license. So they've taken this as a license or stroke contract interpretation dispute, and they've interpreted it in different ways. Lawyers representing some of the license holders 
Uh, their interpretation, in my view, is wrong because the language in the definition of inflation says that it starts from, remember I mentioned this word from is important, from the date of the agreement, and then it's silent. In my view, if the intention was that this definition was to nail the park owners to the table so that they could only use the inflation date as at here the 1st of October, it would have used language like as at the review date. Inflation is da -da -da -da, applied as at the review date. That would mean that year on year, they could clearly only use the 1st of October inflation rate. It doesn't say that. So by saying from, it's simply telling you where this starts from, again, that word again. And my view is that's how a court would find that. Now let's go to the Parks interpretation because it says, well, we can basically apply it from any date we like throughout the year. I also think that's wrong as well. That's wrong for a number of reasons. One, the agreement does not say that. Um, it's silent on that. Um, in the same way as it doesn't actually say um, you can't, you have to do it on the 1st of October, it also doesn't say that you can do it any time you like. So what does that mean? It means we're in a grey area. And for the consumer, this is good news, especially if you're somebody who's entered into a license agreement post the Consumer Rights Act 2015. Uh, and if you are, that came in on the 1st of October 2015, meaning that that law applies to you, there's good news. And that's because we've got this Section 69 of the Consumer Rights Act that basically says if a term in an agreement, here a license agreement, could be construed as having two different meanings, clearly the case here, it means that the law will take the assumption that the meaning that is preferable, that's favourable to the consumer, will prevail. So if you apply that here, it means that the court, if it applied Section 69, as I think it would do on most, if not perhaps all occasions, would conclude that the contract is not satisfactory, it's not that clear, therefore it can only conclude that the inflation rate taken must be, in this particular case, as at the 1st of October um, because it's taking the side of the consumer as the Consumer Rights Act says it should, i.e. it's giving it the benefit of the doubt. So he or she, the consumer, gets the benefit of the doubt. I just want to stress this because there will be people watching this video that they're watching this video not because they want to write a letter to their park, perhaps they do, but there'll be other people I know that are thinking of taking them to court. If you take a park owner to court, my 24 years experience as a lawyer tells me that you keep your claim simple. If you go to court and you want to argue that the contract means one thing when they think it means another, that's not simple because different judges on different days may see that differently and you're trying to convince that court of a particular meaning under the contract. That's why I say it's always best to keep it simple. The simple approach here is backed up by the Consumer Rights Act. And it's as I've already said, the simple approach is Mr. Judge, Mrs. Judge, court, this contract's unclear by any interpretation. It could mean this, it could mean that. Therefore, the safe route is to go down the Consumer Rights Act route and find in my favour as consumer. And you'd be telling the court that the reason why the legislator put Section 69 in is because it was in recognition that there are many consumer contracts, licenses as in this case, where the position is just unclear. And that is never going to be fair to a consumer. And therefore, this is the road to take. I could give you many other legal arguments here by way of example. I could be talking about section 62.4, sub subsection 4 of the Consumer Rights Act, which talks about significant imbalance in the parties. If something gives the trader here, the park, um, far more rights than you as the consumer, puts them in a far better position, and therefore the consumer in a detrimental position, it can mean 
that that particular clause is unfair. I think there's good um, grounds to apply that principle here, but I would keep it simple. The simple approach in relation to the particular agreement I've seen is it's so unclear as to what the actual meaning of the term and meaning of the definition is that it's best to take the section 69 under the consumer rights act route and simply find in favor of the consumer that would be my approach i think that approach gives the park owners lots of difficulties it gives them a headache and if i were the park owner i would basically give in to that argument and go with it i hope you found that advice helpful i also answer specific questions from consumers every Friday night at 9 p.m. on my LBC radio show called the LBC Consumer Hour via my Daily Mail column every Wednesday and on the This Is Money website and most weeks during ITV this morning.